The reason you are not making any progress is because you're not being consistent. If I was to ask you, can you honestly say that you've been consistent over the last couple of weeks, what would your response be? I'll just leave that as a hypothetical question for now. It doesn't matter how smart you are or how much in the past you might have succeeded without really trying all that hard. When you start climbing the academic ladder and getting into graduate school, doing your masters or your PhD, your lack of consistency is going to catch up with you. But by the end of this video, you are going to be so ready for consistency, so ready. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and I've been supporting social sciences graduate students for around about 20 years now. And in that time, I have seen the real benefits of consistency, not just for my own academic career, but for those of my students. I want you to experience that as well. So let's have a look at what we're covering in this video. Firstly, what does consistency mean? Secondly, what does it look like? Thirdly, what are the major benefits? And lastly, how can you keep it up? Okay, let's get into it. So firstly, what does it mean? If you look up the definition of consistency in the dictionary, you'll come across something like this. Acting in the same way over time. It's about maintaining a steady and reliable pattern of behavior over the course of time. It's about being persistent in working towards your goals. Some parts of our life have consistency built into them. They're things that we just have to do on a regular basis. So we've got to put the bins out. We've got to do the laundry. We've got to keep our houses tidy. We've got to file our taxes. Because if we don't do those things, there are immediate consequences for that. Other parts of our life don't have that kind of consistency built into them. So we've just got to sort that out for ourselves. We've just got to be proactive in establishing habits and sticking to them. One of the problems I found with graduate students is that they have trouble establishing those habits and those routines and being consistent with the big things, you know, like their dissertation, because they get preoccupied with the little things, the things that kind of demand their attention, the things that are in front of them every day like responding to emails, attending meetings. And because they get preoccupied, they get distracted by those everyday things, they tend to push the important thing onto the back burner. That important thing being their dissertation. And it's quite common to hear graduate students say that they are just too busy to be consistent with their dissertation. They've got all this other stuff going on. But if your dissertation is important to you, you will prioritize it. You will make room in your life for it. So let's have a look at how you can do that. And that involves knowing what consistency looks like. But the main thing I'd say about it is to be realistic. Don't commit to something that you can't keep up, something you can't sustain. It's much better to say that you're going to work on your dissertation for three hours a week than say you're gonna work on it for 20 hours a week and then just completely burn out and not be able to do anything on it for like two months. So keep your feet on the ground with this. Be realistic. You have got other stuff going on in your life. You can't just drop looking after your kids or doing the job that's actually funding your studies. Some stuff you've just got to work around and it is doable. It is possible because thousands of people have done it before you. You can do it as well. Now, another thing that students say to me is that I can't be consistent with my dissertation because disasters just keep happening to me. I got sick, a relative became unwell, I had to move house. Life happens, you get thrown off course occasionally. But the thing is, if you've had a couple of months where you've been consistent, you've regularly showed up, and then something happens to derail your plans and it distracts you for a couple of weeks, it is much easier to get back on it than if you were never consistent in the first place. So taking it like one week at a time, you've got to build up a consistent foundation. And once you've got that foundation there, it doesn't matter if you kind of topple off it because something happens because you'll quite easily be able to get back on and get back into the momentum of what you were doing before. I was recently really ill with a horrible nasty virus and sinusitis, which I had to take antibiotics for. It was, it was really horrible. And I was completely out of the picture. I literally could not do any work for like five weeks. It was actually, it was probably six weeks. But because I'd been relatively consistent before I became ill, it was much easier for me to just pick up the baton once I did recover, once I did start feeling a bit better. I'm quite a consistent person in general. So when things like that happen to me, 
I'm really bummed about it. It really sucks and it's really frustrating. But I know that because I've got that basis, I've got that foundation, that once I do start getting back into things, it's not gonna take me too long to get back into my stride again. And I also want to address something about jobs here because a lot of students who I've supported over the years have been working either full-time or part-time to fund their studies. And I am not about to say to you, you need to give up your job because if you give up your job, you've got to give up your degree. So I'm not asking you to do that, but I am going to tell you that you need to stop using your job as an excuse for not showing up for your dissertation. There was actually a piece of research done a few years ago and it showed that PhD students who had full-time employment, they had a full-time job that they had to show up for, those people were more likely to actually complete their doctorates. Yeah, people with nine to five jobs, more likely to complete their PhD. Many of the students that I've supported over the years have had full-time jobs at the same time as they've been doing their degrees and they've succeeded because they've made a commitment to be consistent in working on their dissertation. That has been the key difference between the students who finished their degrees and the students who've done really well, and those who dropped out, those who failed, those who just kind of scraped to pass. The students who've managed to successfully balance a full-time job or a part-time job with their studies are the students who have consistently sat down and planned out the time that they're going to spend working on their dissertation. Sometimes that time slot has been the same week in, week out. It's been a particular day at a particular time and it's been like that for a couple of years. For other students, they have to plan on more of a week by week basis because they've got like an unpredictable work schedule. But what makes a difference all the time is the commitment to sit down with your calendar or your diary and say, right, OK, here's when I'm working on that this week. And that way you don't procrastinate, you don't put things off, you know that you've got that appointment with yourself and you show up for it. The students who were not able to successfully balance their work and their study are the students who didn't do that and they would end up failing or dropping out or scraping a pass. And that really sucks. And unfortunately that happens, but it doesn't have to happen. So commit to being consistent and it really will pay off. Now, let's have a look at the benefits of being consistent. The main benefit is if you are consistent, if you show up regularly, everything else will fall into place. Progress will just start to happen if you're consistent. Not by magic, by fairies and elves, but by momentum. Consistency generates momentum. You start moving, you keep moving. Momentum generates progress. And by far my best students, the ones who've got the best results, have always been the students who are the most consistent. Not the students who are the brightest, the most intelligent, the most naturally talented, but the students who are the most consistent. You get students who are naturally bright, who are incredibly talented, and when it came to their undergraduate, their bachelors, it didn't take too much of an effort for them to excel at that level. Perhaps they weren't very consistent, perhaps they crammed all at the last minute, but they still got the results. That doesn't tend to happen at postgraduate level because it's a whole different ballgame. And if those students continue to be inconsistent, they find that they start dropping behind. And the students who perhaps weren't as clever as them or didn't get the results that they got at undergraduate level, but were consistent, they tend to overtake them. And it's like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? Students who are not outstandingly naturally academic, who make it to postgraduate level, if they are consistent, they will succeed. And I've seen this time and time and time again. It doesn't matter how naturally smart or intelligent you are. If you don't regularly show up, if you don't regularly put in the hours, you're not gonna succeed. So at this stage, have a think about what your goals are right now for your dissertation. Is it to complete your literature review, finish your data collection, get the whole thing written up? If you're not making progress towards that goal at the moment, what we need to do is throw it in the bin, like literally get rid of it. And we are going to replace it with one new goal, consistency. You are going to show up and work on your dissertation whatever days this week for however many hours this week, but that is going to be your goal, literally to just show up for it. Everything else will come if you are consistent. Word count, quality of critical analysis, level of insight from your data, knowledge of theory, knowledge of the literature, it will all come if you are consistent. Not by magic, but by showing up. Progress happens from showing up because progress, as we said earlier, 
generates momentum. There is a strength and a force that you gain simply through just being in motion. If you're consistent, your work and your resolve will get stronger. Your confidence will grow. You'll feel less overwhelmed and any challenges or problems that you're having with your dissertation are not going to seem so huge because you're looking at them regularly. When you repeatedly confront the stuff that you're stuck on, you find ways to get unstuck. It might take some time, it might take some figuring out, but consistent people solve their problems much quicker, much faster, much more efficiently than people who are procrastinators. This probably isn't the first time that someone said you need to be consistent, is it? You've probably been consistent before at various points in the past, but it's just kind of fizzled out. Why did it fizzle out? One key thing that you really need to watch is getting sidetracked. And I'm not talking about Netflix or TikTok here. I'm talking about other things, things that you think you should be doing, or to put it more accurately, things that other people tell you you should be doing. Taking on stuff that is not actually connected to completing your thesis. Volunteering to get involved in faculty stuff, volunteering to help your supervisor with whatever. Agreeing to do things because people tell you it will be good for your career. Academics, mentors, supervisors, they can be a little bit naughty with this stuff because if there's something that they really don't want to do, but they've got this willing, helpful, smiling graduate student who says yes to absolutely everything, then they will gladly dump it on you. You've got to learn to say no to these things. If you don't, you are going to get this simmering feeling of resentment. And one day on some quiet Tuesday afternoon, you are going to explode and you're going to be forever known as that graduate student who lost their shit that one time. Alternatively, if you're not a blow your lid kind of person, you are going to become bitter and cynical and dead inside. I've come across plenty of both types of people in my academic career and I do not want that for you. So when someone presents a good opportunity to you, take the time to really think whether it is actually a good opportunity or if it's just being presented to you as a good opportunity by someone who can't be asked to do it themselves. Ask yourself these questions. Is this going to help me write a better thesis? Is this going to help my professional development in some other way? One year from now, what will the benefit of doing this thing be? Saying no does not make you unhelpful or rude or damage your career prospects. If anything, it actually enhances them because you're showing up as someone with boundaries, someone who values and protects their time, someone who knows how to prioritize and that kind of person is highly employable and highly promotable. Aside from saying no, there is another really helpful thing you can do when it comes to being consistent, and that is regularly reflecting. Don't make it complicated, don't make it feel like a chore, don't create lots of friction. Just do this one simple thing. Every week, set a reminder on your phone and ask yourself this question. Have I been consistent this week? If the answer is no, Think about why not and what you can do to get back on it. If the answer is yes, how have you managed to do that and how can you keep it up? If you're up for doing further work on your mindset, I have linked to some other videos in the description and they are all incredibly helpful when it comes to getting your act together. And that's it, we're done. I will see you next week.